Once upon a time, on a day that you celebrate every year, you entered the world bloodied and beautiful. Before you even took your first breath, you began to receive information, what your laughter would sound like, the color of your eyes. And as you go older, you received more information, directly and indirectly, about the story of your place in the world, culture, language, tradition. It became the blueprint of your life. And fairy tales are very helpful in childhood because they help us to navigate very difficult emotional realities. When you didn't have a framework for what you were feeling, that familiar narrative structure of a struggle, a villain, a hero, and a happy ending helps you to feel like things are going to be okay. But fairy tales, while they are helpful in childhood, are not so helpful when we become adults. Now you might be thinking, I don't believe in fairy tales. I'm a grown-up person now. Well, let's think about how fairy tale or magical thinking might be in infiltrating our lives in terms of three key areas, relationships, career, and finances. Have you ever thought, one day, when I meet the one, then I'll be happy forever? <laughs> or what about our careers? We've been told for decades that we just have to work hard get a degree, get a job, and then everything will be okay. But I've worked at four of the top universities in South Africa over the past 13 years, and I see the same narrative happening with hundreds and thousands of students. They come to campus, and they work hard to get a degree. And when they step off their graduation stage, degree in hand, they think, finally, I can have my happy ending. But then, they face the real struggles of life, and we realize that there is something missing in the story. The sad reality is that they don't question maybe the story I've been told is not a full story. They start to question, what if something is wrong with me? And so that's what I want to address, is the narratives that are underplaying in our lives. And let's think about finances. You might think, finances? No ways. Finances are a numbers game. It's rational. You know, what does fairy tale thinking have to do with how I spend my money? But the Cambridge University study has found that by age three, we are already forming our money beliefs. We have a toddler, so we're very intentional about teaching her where money comes from. And if you don't know, it's work. <laughs> and by age seven, our money habits are established. And maybe that's why you struggle to keep a budget because your head is, knows what to do, but your heart is saying something else. And we don't really question the fairy tale narrative until one day when there is a reality that we face that we find that there's something wrong with the picture that we are facing. I also know that my story is not unique. In a recent study published by the Lancet Psychiatry Commission on Intimate Partner Violence and Gender um, and, and Mental Health, it was found that intimate partner violence is the most common form of violence worldwide. Not genocide, not terrorist attacks, intimate partner violence. So children are growing up in homes where they're facing private wars and they're learning that this is the way the world works. And until we help them to interrupt that cycle, we are doomed to repeat that. It was also found that one in four women globally will experience intimate partner violence in her lifetime. One in four. In South Africa, those numbers are closer to one in two. And as you are trying to digest this reality, I hope that you are thinking about what it might feel like for someone in your life who has experienced it, is experiencing it, or will experience it in their lifetime. And I hope that you are asking the question, how can I best support these women in my life that are going through a private war? I can tell you that they are trying very hard to cope. They are trying very hard to be okay. And one thing that victims do not need is your pity. We are already carrying burdens of shame that was never asked to carry in the first place. 
So the best thing that you can do is to think about what would you need if you had experienced violence that you didn't ask for and you didn't want and that you want to heal from. I hope you would realize that the best support you can give anybody who's experienced abuse is to say, hey, I'm here with you. I'm gonna walk this road of healing with you. This is not your full story. You are still powerful, you are still strong, and I'm gonna help you reclaim who you really are. I really hope that's what you do for the women in your life that need that reality. Because let's talk about survival. We are told as victims, I'm so sorry that you went through that. Oh, look how strong you are, it's made you stronger. You know what, I hated that line. I don't want to be made strong that way. Maybe I want it straight in another way. And so the survival narrative can be very destructive because when we're just trying to survive, trying to act like everything is okay, we begin to start feeling like we are drowning on the inside, like we have no voice and that we've lost our power. And we still have that fairy tale thinking stuck in our brain. So we're trying to make work for example, our Prince Charming. We're trying to give work everything that we have. If I just get that promotion, if I just get this job, if I just get this salary, then I'll be okay. But fairy tale thinking keeps us passive. We are not active participants in our lives. When I was able to walk away from that relationship, I was really struggling in survival mode. I was trying to cope with the pain of being raped at age 17, but as most young women who experience this, they are charged to be protectors of the people that are supposed to protect them. Just keep quiet, don't say anything. So where do you go for protection? Yourself. And we are trying to deal with these secrets that are eating us alive. And I also turn to shopping. And you know what? I didn't wake up one day thinking, Today will be the day where I embark on a decade-long shopping addiction that will wreck my financial life in my 30s, and my poor husband will have to help me pay off this mountain of debt. No, we don't plan to sabotage our lives when we are stuck in survival. We are just trying to cope. And also what happens is that we don't know how to recognize safe people. Because of our propensity to people please and be addicted to approval, we tend to find people who are manipulative and controlling and intimidating. And that survival reality took me to a place where, unfortunately, I realized I'd ended up in a cult. Yes, I said the word cult, I see the heads raised as I say <laughs> that word. Suddenly you're paying attention because you've heard the story of survival before, but you might be wondering, how did you end up in a cult? And you might ask me the question very awkwardly, do only stupid people end up in cults? And the answer is no. Vulnerable people end up in cults. If you've grown up your whole life struggling, surviving, and other people telling you that you don't know how to fix your life, you're just a little victim, surviving, let me help you, let me show the way, you tend to believe them. And when I realized I'd been in a cult, that was my final straw of survival. I was tired of somebody else telling me how to live my life. And I finally found the help that I needed. I found an amazing counselor. I still see her today. And she was able to give me a safe space for the very first time. I could feel seen and heard. I was 30 years old. Please don't let it take you that long to find a safe person who can see you for who you are and to see your value and to be a guide to help you get back to your place of strength and your place of power. In that process of going through healing for the first time, I realized that I actually had an epiphany. It is an act of rebellion to live as a whole person in a broken world. We are told that brokenness is normal, it's okay, we're surviving, we don't have any power over it. That's just a fairy tale talking. Don't believe it, fight against it. The irony is that I wanted to be normal my whole life, but if brokenness is normal, I would rather be a radical. I would rather fight to have a life that I want to live and not what other people are telling me I should have. And so what is wholeness? I hope you're asking that question and I'd love to share my experience of wholeness with you. 
in essence, wholeness is reconnecting your head and your heart. It's bringing those two things back together. In trauma and pain and multiple stories, we disconnect our head and our heart. We don't trust ourselves. And when we try to go towards things that we know makes us come alive, we believe other people telling us, not now, not you, not at this time. So this is the wholeness process. We have to accept struggle. There will be struggle in the fairy tale and there will be struggle in the adventure. I prefer the struggle in the adventure because that helps me to get from where I am to where I want to go. It helps me realize that that's saying yes to the pain of getting better and moving forward with my life versus the pain of staying the same. And it brings a wonderful sense of rebirth. We didn't choose our birth, but we can choose a way that we rebirth ourselves. This is the essence of reinvention. This is the essence of what it means to be future fit. It's saying, if I can't do X career anymore, then who am I? Who can I become? But you need safe people to help you in that inner journey, that inner pursuit of who you really are. When you find your guide, you are also then able to find your tribe. People that may not have walked with you in your childhood, but people who understand your journey. They are people that see for who you really are, that challenge you in a loving way to say, you know that you can do this. I've had multiple people who are part of my tribe help me to stand on the stage today. We are not self-made people. We have to work together and we have to help each other to become whole again. As we reform our thinking, that's how we truly transform. That's the power of transformation. I don't have to live as a survivor. I can live as a victor in my own life. I can live as a hero in my own life. And that's what I share with young people to say, don't wait for your job to tell you what you can be. Go into the world, become a problem solver because you are powerful. There's treasure inside of you that has to be unlocked. The fairy tale does not unlock that, but the adventure journey of wholeness is what unlocks the power that the world needs. And there's one thing that I love to share in terms of wholeness is the word Irene, which is the Greek word that means to join together that which was once disconnected. And the real power of reconnection is saying, who am I meant to be? What are the clues in my childhood, as other speakers have shared, of what I know is my true power? And how do I prioritize those healthy, safe relationships that will help me to grow and to become who I'm meant to be. And the message I want to leave with you today is the same message that I would leave with my 17-year-old self, who started her first job and felt lost and alone. You are not broken. You are powerful. You are strong. You are capable of taking back the pen and rewriting your own story. Victor Hugo said that there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And I truly believe that the time has come for a wholeness revolution, and it starts with you. Thank you. Thank you.